Rev up your engines. Hey, World Says, I have one question. If I keep full acceleration in the red zone, how many times will the engines work well? I have a YouTube channel in Korea. I've been working since 2001. <laughs> okay, you don't want to always be accelerating in the red zone, having the RPMs as high as you can possibly get. It will wear the engine out faster. That's just the way that it is. I can't give any time frame. You know, I'd need to know the vehicle, how many miles it has on it. But the red zone is there for hard acceleration. You don't want to be driving in a red zone all the time because you'll just wear the engine out faster. Now, if you like going fast and you don't mind it, you're going to buy another car or another engine that wears out, go ahead. It's your money. But you're best to have your car when you're running at the lowest RPM possible for that speed. That's why there's overdrive. So when you're on a highway, you have a car in overdrive, so it gets better gas mileage. The engine spins slower and it lasts longer. Kelvin Owen says, Scotty, does an early model Honda Civic EH2 EG or BMW E30s make for, for a good first project cars? The Honda Civic would make a very good project car. The BMW would only make a good project car if your father was a millionaire and he didn't care that he throws money at you all the time. Because <laughs> those things are endless money pits. The parts cost a fortune. If you ever have to rebuild a BMW engine, it costs a fortune to do it correctly. Where Hondas, there's so many Hondas out there, and kids wreck them all the time from racing around. You can get a good used engine for a Honda. With a BMW, nah, it's going to be a lot harder to find a good used engine, and if you do have to rebuild it yourself, it's going to cost you a small fortune. Go Civic if you want a project car. Plus, the parts are a lot cheaper. Craig Kinder says, Scotty, my 2014 Lexus IS250 says I should only use premium fuel. I hate spending the extra money. Do you think I can get away with regular fuel instead. Oh yes, it'll run perfectly fine. It's a very sophisticated car. And the thing about it is, if you use regular gas, you'll have less horsepower. But it'll run perfectly fine. It won't hurt anything. If you use premium, you'll have more acceleration. It'll run faster. But it's not going to hurt anything. It's not like that is an old, say, 60s muscle car where you had to run them on premium because they had real high compression pistons. And if you ran them on regular fuel, they'd ping and the engine would be damaged. Modern cars won't do that because they have knock sensors. If it starts pinging, then the computer will just lower the advance of the ignition system so it won't have the same acceleration, but it won't ping. So it won't hurt anything. You just lose a little acceleration. Toothbrush flamethrower. <laughs> That's a good one. Scotty, my 2011 Subaru Forester burns one quart of oil every 800 miles. Apparently, there's recall on engines less than 100,000, about mine at 102,000. Is there anything to prevent oil burning? Well, in that case, not much you can really do. Here's the thing. Boxer engines, as they age, often burn oil. It's just the nature of the design of those things. One quart every 800 miles isn't all that bad. You can change the PCV valve. Sometimes a PCV valve will suck oil in and then burn it, and that's the problem. But on those engines, it's normally the piston rings wear, valve seals wear. Nothing's really going to affect that. But I have had some customers have good luck. They'll switch to a high quality oil, like they'll get Castrol, and they'll buy a little heavier weight Castrol, and they'll put one quart of Lucas oil conditioner in with the mix. So if it's four quarts of oil, three quarts of Castrol, one of the Lucas oil additive. And sometimes it's will burn less oil. You can see what happens with that. FC says, what are your thoughts about a 2013 Ford show with 24,000 miles? Oh, the show engines. They're good engines. They can zip around. Now, as you get old and age, they can have a lot of problems and cost a lot of money to fix. That thing's only got 24,000 miles, but it's six years old. So, if you're talking about buying a used one, get it as low as you can. They depreciate like mad. If you can get it to a price that you're happy with, and you road test it and take it to a guy like me who hooks up his fancy scan tool, and after about an hour says, hey, it's in good shape. Doesn't have any problems. You get it for a good price, it can be a fun vehicle to drive around in. It costs an awful lot new. I mean, you bought one new, you're probably not going to get your money's worth, but it's six years old. Well, now you get a good price on it. Hey, why not? Richard Hernandez. I got a 2005 CRV with 60,000 miles. Was it a good purchase? I can assume it is. I got cousin with CRVs. They have 350,000 miles and they're still running. 60,000 miles is nothing on one of those things. If the previous owner at least changed the oil in it regularly, you shouldn't be having any problems at all. You know, you got a good deal. If uh, that's the only mileage that it actually has on it. Beast Mode says I got a 2012 Chevy Equinox and the driver's tail light won't work. I changed all the bulbs. Thanks. The driver's tail light doesn't work. So you change the bulbs. Chevy is notorious for having ground wire problems. For any bulb to work, you have to have power, positive electricity, Electricity, but also negative electricity, which is the ground. So if the ground wire is bad, it won't work either. So check that black ground wire first. And if you've ever been in a wreck or you get your lens cracked, water gets inside and the net screws up the uh, sockets. And a lot of times they'll need a new socket then. They'll get all corroded inside. 
So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.